Hello everyone, you are watching a snippet of the countdown program from January 26, 2023. Today is Thursday. See the full version of the program on the Patreon resource. And thanks to everyone who is becoming our patrons right now. After realizing that the West did not give a damn about the rashest red-brown lines and decided to supply tanks to Ukraine, they whined in the swamps, it's not too late, we must win. If we don't win today, we'll be finished tomorrow. In his White House speech, President Biden said, I announced that the United States will send 31 Abrams tanks to Ukraine, a testament to our unwavering and unwavering commitment to Ukraine and our confidence in the skill of Ukrainian troops. As I told President Zelensky, we will be with Ukraine for as long as it takes. And immediately German Chancellor Olaf Scholz decided to supply 14 Leopard 2 tanks to Ukraine, also allowing the re-export of tanks to other countries. At the same time, the training of Ukrainian crews will begin in Germany in a few days. The tank assistance package includes logistics, ammunition and vehicle maintenance. The Kremlin shuddered at the prospects, and propagandists whined on their airs, suspecting that it would soon be very painful. Cave political scientist Sergei Starovoitov burst into tears. If the supply of tanks to Ukraine is another red line, then what kind of Trump cards do we have? This is the first question, but not the most important, because something else is much more important. Tanks symbolize the transition beyond diplomatic flags and the actual entry of NATO into the war against Russia. It is understood in the West, it is understood in Russia, and it is clear to everyone all over the world. The pro-Kremlin telegram channel answers him, numb from logical discoveries. The next step is long-range missiles. The need for deeper strikes on Russian territory is already being actively discussed in Western media. This step is followed by the next, the closing of the sky over Ukraine. The Kremlin only has to choose, when exactly to respond to lay out its trump cards, do they exist? Comma the end of the quote. Against the backdrop of reports that Western countries have begun discussions about the possibility of transferring fighter jets to Kyiv, the Russians are left with nothing but missile terror. On the morning of January 26, the Russians again attacked Ukraine with missiles. Ukrainian air defense forces have demonstrated a high level of efficiency. There were about 20 missiles of various types in the airspace of Kyiv, they were all shot down. However, in Odessa, two critical energy infrastructure facilities were damaged as a result of the strikes. In the Golozevsky district of the capital, as a result of the fall of a part of the rocket, one person was killed and two people were injured. In Dnepr, information was confirmed about the arrival at an industrial enterprise. Fortunately, there were no casualties. The Lviv Regional Military Administration denied the data on arrivals in the region. The Kremlin hysteria, which rebounded from the Ministry of Defense in the form of spontaneous strikes, was 80% repelled by Ukrainian air defense. And caveman political scientists whined that the empire urgently needed a victory. Because if you don't win now, tomorrow the West will cross all the red lines in general, and the cannibal will definitely not be good. The rashest publication military review is hysterical. It is clear that the Russian army, although hard, will repel the first blows. The first waves of leopards, challengers, Leclercs and Abrams will be destroyed. They will shoot down the first western warplanes. Thousands of Russian peasants will die. A new wave of mobilization will be required. The Russian Federation will be covered by a new wave of pessimism. The flight of young people abroad new economic problems will come up. For example, there is a shortage of medicines, almost all the equipment and most of the raw materials come from abroad, and supplies are shrinking. Personnel shortage at the enterprises of the military-industrial complex, technical education is optimized, there are managers, but turners, machine operators, locksmiths, etc. the cat cried. Thus, when Moscow starts making the right decisions, it may be too late. Time factor. The Russian Federation cannot butt heads with all the military, economic and human potential of NATO. And we need victory as soon as possible. Until the collective West has launched its military-industrial complex to increase its military potential to its full potential, end of quote. Woolly think correctly, sensing their own death. 
but their main problem is in themselves. It was they who for decades raised a howl in the swamps about the need to restore the USSR with subsequent geopolitical revenge. Moreover, the world is witnessing an attempt at such a revenge today on the example of Russia's war with Ukraine. No matter how much the rusty post-Soviet war machine speeds up, it cannot defeat the West. Understanding this is late, but it comes. Therefore, as the moment of truth on the battlefield approaches, the system will spark more and more from within, hastily considering options for its own preservation and urgent transformation. She has already voiced one of these scenarios through good Russians, such as Khodorkovsky and Kasparov. But the statements of these repeaters of the empire's wish list require a separate analysis. Become our patrons now and look further in this program. Khodorkovsky and Kasparov wrote an article, Don't Fear Putin's Death, asking the West to give the empire another chance at transformation. State Council, Constituent Assembly, all that. But the people are a fastener, what to do with, who will decriminalize and change the mentality of untrained savages in the bonded zone. The fathers of cave democracy kept silent about this. Strelkov Gherkin seems to have finished whining. Prigozhin's eyelids lifted, and his mouth spewed out an invitation to the front. Code's invitation for the Viper to heroically end his career as a terrorist has not yet received a response. The head of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Serbia, Ivica Dacic, said that Belgrade could join the sanctions against Russia if it deems it necessary. Previously, Serbia did not impose sanctions because it believed that it is not in its interests. But the direction of the political wind is rapidly changing. The level of corruption in Russia against the backdrop of sanctions continues to grow by leaps and bounds. Whining is on the whole cave. About a third of entrepreneurs complain that they are being stripped of three skins. Putin's symbolic denunciation of the European Convention on Liability for Corruption turned into its heyday. And that's all for today. See the full version of the program on the Patreon resource. And thanks to everyone who is becoming our patrons right now. I hugged everyone. Meet tomorrow on Friday Live. Glory to Ukraine.